K. Lau's back, the big three is intact, and now the path towards Jimmy Butler's first championship ring begins for South Beach's basketball club. Lowry, Butler, and Adebayo have played just 14 games together, spanning 257 minutes, but in that limited playing time, Miami's outscoring teams by 29. After a nine-game absence, the return of the greatest player in Toronto Raptors history, and now the Heat's six-time All-Star at point guard, led to a second-half beatdown on Buzz City. This video breaks down the implications of this intimidatingly powerful trio being healthy, and how Miami made a statement against Charlotte. Right quick, only 12.5% of you watching right now are subscribed, so if you haven't already, please subscribe and turn on notifications. Also leave a thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a massive difference. You can follow me slash hit me up on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops and I'll follow you back. Links in the description for those two platforms. With Kyle Lowry back in the lineup, the Miami Heat were out to make a dominant, masterful, overwhelming, assertive, authoritative, and mind-numbing statement. While those words are fitting, none of them fully encapsulate the Miami Heat's second-half performance over the Charlotte Hornets on Saturday night. After trailing by five at the break, the Heat outscored Charlotte 58-35 in the second half, including an absolutely insane 55-20 run up until the 434 mark in the final frame, all en route to a beastly 104-86 victory. Over those final 24 minutes, Miami shot 50% from the field and 56.2% from three-point range. That was shocking, considering they bricked 14 of their 16 attempts from distance in the opening half. Jimmy Butler had a team-high 27 on 10 of 13 shooting and 7 of 7 from the charity stripe, racking up 6 boards, 4 dimes, and 1 block. Bam Adebayo recorded his 15th double-double in just his 29th game of the 2021-22 season, posting 20 points, 12 boards, 3 steals, and a pair of blocks in just 28 minutes. Tyler Hero added 19 points on 7 of 13 shooting, 5 of 8 from distance, with 4 boards and 2 steals. Just an overwhelming attack from Miami 1 through 15, but on the other side, in a dreadful second half, Charlotte was held to 35.7% shooting. In the 18-point loss for Charlotte, they also made just 27.8% of their threes and 62.5% from the line. Terry Rozier recorded a team-high 16 on 6 for 12 shooting, adding 6 rebounds, Miles Bridges posted 15 points on 6 of 14, plus 5 boards, 5 dimes, and swatted a team most 4 shots. A lot of positives for Charlotte, who are on track to make the play-in tournament this year. Lamelo Ball had 12 points, shooting 5 for 11 on the evening, hauling down 6 rebounds while dishing out 3 assists. P.J. Washington notched 11 points with 3 triples in 19 minutes off the pine. Maybe the biggest headliner from Saturday night was the fact that it marked the first time that twin bros Caleb and Cody Martin, who were teammates in Charlotte for their first two NBA seasons and essentially everywhere else in their basketball life, squared off against each other in a non-exhibition game in their respective NBA careers. For a separate video breaking down Caleb's impact, go watch this video on your screen right after this. Both Martin twins finished with 8 points, Cody had 5 rebounds with a pair of dimes and a steal, while Caleb totaled 8 rebounds, 3 dimes, but Miami's now won 2 straight after enduring a brutal 4-game losing streak, moving to 34-20 and 20, and a slight advantage in the Eastern Conference, though it's still mere percentage points above the Chicago Bulls. The Hornets have lost 4 straight, dropping to 28-26. and 26. Miami began the contest sloppy, missing 8 of their first 11 shots, with four turnovers, playing at a frantic pace. Martin's jumper gave Miami the 14-13 lead with 4.35 left in the opening quarter. Miami fashioned a 15-5 run over the final three minutes of the first quarter, leading 31-23. Charlotte manufactured a 14-2 run midway through the second, capped by Bridges' wing triple, retaking the 42-40 lead. Charlotte entered halftime with the 51-46 advantage, outscoring the Heat 28-15 in the second quarter. Charlotte shot 40.9% and 42.9% from distance. Miami shot 33.3% and was an abysmal 2 of 16, 12.5% from beyond the arc in the first half. It's really a miracle that Miami was still in this game, but Butler and Adebayo accounted for 28 of the Heat's 46 first half points. Shortly thereafter, Miami would turn it up. They opened the second half on a 28-7 run, including 16 unanswered, capped by Butler's second-chance layup to give the Heat a 74-57 lead with 2.21 left in the third quarter. The Heat's bludgeoning continued. Martin's layup made it 83-59, 
Back-to-back -back hero three balls increased it to 99-69 with 544 left. Give credit to the Hornets for closing the final 430 on a 15-3 run, but it was far too little too late to generate any sort of heart-throbbing comeback attempt. Miami's next game comes in the nation's capital on Monday before they travel to the Big Easy to conclude their final game of a very long road trip. The Heat recently dropped two down-to-the-wire games to my Toronto Raptors that could have gone either way. One was a triple overtime thriller, the other ended up being a four-point game. Bam Adebayo's performances in those two outings were completely different. In 45 minutes during the Triple OT game, Bam missed easy shots around the basket and committed six turnovers, limited to just 14 points on the evening. Conversely, the game versus Toronto on February 1st saw Adebayo break out to record a stat line of 32 and 11 on 13 for 17 shooting from the field. In that beastly showing north of the border, supremely stuffing the stat sheet, Bam Bam also tallied two steals and a block. When he finds his flow, like he did in Miami's third game this season against the Raptors, we know Adebayo is one of the most versatile defensive big men and all around a top three to five center at the very least. Making him one of the best second options in all of basketball is Bam's ability to burst out in transition like a guard, attracting the defense's attention and in turn opening up space for Miami's three-point snipers. If they miss, Adebayo's rim running often gives Miami second chance opportunities. In offensive rebounds per game among centers, Bam ranks a solid 11th right behind Carl Anthony Towns and DeAndre Ayton. Adebayo is not a back-to-the-basket type player, and the Heat don't run too much action to get him down low for ISO situations. The man thrives at capitalizing on O boards, putbacks, creation from others, and simply beating his matchup down the court with his blistering speed and long strides. He didn't score a point with a play called for him, and until he becomes that guy, the 30 plus point nights like he had versus Toronto won't be sustainable. However, the more the Heat get healthy, the more Adebayo's game is going to open up. When Lowry's on the court, Adebayo is actually much more aggressive because Lowry's able to find him in ways not everyone else does. And the biggest what if is whether or not the former all-star Oladipo returns healthy which would give the Heat another penetrator, which is always beneficial for a big who can catch lobs and score on the offensive glass. In my Raptors 2019 title run, Serge Ibaka's presence as a rim protector and garbage man around the hoop offensively was fundamental in Toronto achieving the ultimate glory. Adebayo's not only the Heat's most crucial board getter, but on the other side of the floor, he's debatably the most switchable, uber-athletic rim protector in the game. Bam's injuries don't give him the games to qualify, but his 103.4 defensive rating would make him the third most valuable five-man stopper in the world. Directly behind Cleveland's Jarrett Allen and Salt Lake City's three-time DPOY in Rudy Gobert. Having said that, like Kawhi took the Raptors in 2019 with Kay Lau and Serge as primary pieces around him, Jimmy Butler in 2022 with Kay Lau and Adebayo surrounding him the Heat will go as far as their best player takes them. Will it be the 2021 version of the gassed Butler from getting zero time off after the bubble? Or will we see the 2020 Disneyland Jimmy who willed the Heat into the finals with top of the league bucket getting and perimeter defense all playoffs? Jimmy's averages this season of 22, 6, and 6, 49% shooting from the field and a career best 90% from the foul line but right now, the number one seed in the East speak volumes to the fact that one of our game's top two-way talents is zoned in on getting that elusive first championship experience. Butler has always had the leadership, shot-creating, and stone-cold mentality to be the number one option on a title roster, and with one of the best point guards in the game in Kyle Lowry back at the perfect time, we could start to see Miami separate themselves from the pack in the Eastern Conference, especially with the Bulls' injuries. Why or why not will the Miami Heat get the number one seed in the East this year? Best answer in the comments down below gets next video shout out. Top five commenters with the most shout outs by March 21st receive free NBA merchandise of their choosing this spring. So leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Today's Speaks winner is Ona Ebodaga, who says the best thing I can take away from Chicago's recent stretch of games is the emergence of Ayo Dosumu as a legit 2022 all-rookie team candidate. With their best perimeter defenders in Caruso and Lonzo out, he's regularly seeing minutes defending the opposing team's best player every night 
and shutting down some of the best offensive weapons this league has to offer. Appreciate every answer. I hope you have a great one. DFlow signing off.